Hi, so I'm Andre Hadju, Associate Professor at Questrom. My whole research is on platforms, digital businesses in general, but typically platform businesses. What I want to talk about is uh, data and competitive advantage. And this is based on a Harvard Business Review article, which will be forthcoming, I think, in the January issue. Uh, you often hear today the term or the expression, data is the new oil, which typically means companies learn from data and that's from the data produced by their customers using their products. And that typically is a very valuable resource because then you can improve the product and then gain more customers that way. And there's an increasing number of products, vastly increasing number of products that are using data and this kind of data enabled learning. And they range from very sophisticated products to even the most mundane. I found some for your entertainment, beds, thermostats, sex toys, and as of this week, so after I submitted my slides, I've also learned there's a company in India that does yoga mats, which are now powered by data-enabled learning. I'm happy to go through more of these examples in the breakouts. At least in principle, this kind of data-enabled learning can lead to a virtuous cycle. The more customers you serve, the more data you have, and therefore, the better your product, and therefore, you can attract more customers, and the idea is that helps you marginalize your competitors and you know, build competitive advantage. At least in principle, uh, this sounds very similar to network effects, right? So I have more customers, that increases the value of my platform, and therefore I attract more customers. I will spare you the suspense by saying up front, a lot of the claims that I often hear from investors and, uh, and a lot of entrepreneurs that data-enabled learning creates unfair competitive advantage, a lot of these are exaggerated or sometimes plain wrong. And in general, the type of competitive advantage you can get with data-enabled learning is typically a lot lower than what you can get with typical network effects. So I'll come back to this later. Now, it's still very important to understand, so given the prevalence of data-enabled learning, under what conditions does it actually lead to competitive advantage? And that's the objective of the talk and of the breakouts that it will uh, moderate. My co-author and I came up with a list of seven questions that should be helpful in trying to assess whether data-enabled learning leads to competitive advantage. So I'll, I'll go relatively briefly through these questions. I, I have examples for all these questions. I won't go into the examples. I'll save these for later in the breakouts. First question, pretty obvious, is how much value does learning from data add relative to the standalone value of the product? So maybe I'll explain the first one. If you think of a product like Mobileye, which is driver, uh, driver assistant services, most of the value of that product comes from data-enabled learning. And in this case, it means millions of miles driven under all kinds of road conditions, which make the product like, really uh, able to, you know, to tell you whether you're departing from your lane or whether there's an obstacle coming up. Contrast this with a company like Netflix. So Netflix certainly learns from its customers' data, you know, and they, make, they, they can give you better recommendations. But if you think about most people, they probably don't decide to subscribe to Netflix based on the quality of the recommendations. You typically decide to subscribe based on the library of movies and of TV shows that they have. So the competitive advantage that Netflix can obtain from data-enabled learning is actually relatively small. It's just not a very important factor there. Second thing is not just the total value of the data-enabled learning, but what also matters is the marginal value. So in other words, how quickly does what you can learn from additional customers dissipate? So in some cases, you know, even though you, you may have had like millions of customers, you're still able to continue learning and add you know, valuable improvements to your product. In other cases, what you can learn from your customers is very quickly exhausted at a very small scale. And in that case, obviously, there's no reason to expect that this will, be, you know, this will lead to very sustainable positions. You know, there will be a lot of competitors because there's not a lot of advantage in having a large customer base. Very, you know, very similar, but a little bit different. Uh, how quickly does the value or does the, the relevance of the insights that you can get from the data-enabled learning depreciate? In some cases, you know, the insights that you had like five or ten years ago are still relevant today. In other cases, customer preferences change over time. So what you learn from customers even two years ago may no longer be relevant today. So you kind of have to start from scratch, which again means competitive advantage that you can get is not is not as strong as you might hope for. Fourth. Obviously, it helps in terms of competitive advantage if the data you have from your customers is proprietary uh, or there's some, something unique about it. But that by itself is not enough. I can have all the proprietary data in the world, but if the improvements that I can make to my products based on the proprietary data are very, very easily copied by competitors, again, it's not super helpful. So an example I have here, which I think we're all familiar with, there are all these uh, office productivity software pieces like Doodle and Calendly which basically learn from their customer data and they add features all the time. The issue is these are very easily copied and there's dozens of such providers. Like there's no reason to expect that one of these providers will be dominant in any shape or form. Six, does the data that you get from one user help 
uh, improve the product for that user through personalization, or does it also help improve the product or the service for other users? Now, both of these can be helpful, but there's an important difference. If the only thing you get by extracting data from one user helps to improve the service for the same user, that creates a lot of switching costs. So that's great because you can maintain your customer base but it's not as helpful in trying to get new customers, which is what you get when, the, when learning from some users actually helps a lot of other users. So I like Pandora Internet Radio because I've listened for, to it for years, and they're able to you know, provide like, great recommendations to me. The frustration I have with it, so they're very good at maintaining customers. The frustration I have with it is they're only available in the US. So because it's mostly like user, within user data enabled learning, they haven't been able to go abroad, and they've got overtaken by Apple Music and by uh, Spotify. And then finally, and this is a very important one, uh, is the speed at which the insights that you can get from user data can be incorporated into products. So what really matters here is whether a user that is currently you know, uh, deciding whether or not to adopt your product will actually see improvements from the data that comes from their usage and from other future customers. If that's not the case, it's certainly not as, you know, it's not, it's not gonna be as sustainable or as, uh, uh, as unassailable a competitive advantage that you would hope. And in particular, I want to come back to the, to the notion of network effects. Data-enabled learning can enable network effects if the answer, if basically, if, uh, depending on the answer to these last two questions. So the real test here, so a lot of people care about network effects because obviously it creates barriers to entry. It boils down to a simple question. Do I care as a current user, as a current potential customer of your product, do I care about how many other users are going to adopt the same product from now on? If the answer is yes, then yeah, there's probably a good chance that this has network effects and will have like pretty strong competitive advantage. And of course, there's, so they're very strong, again, there's a virtual circle uh, with data-enabled learning and with network effects, and there's lots of similarities. If you have network effect based on data-enabled learning, you will get the same, uh, the same virtual cycle as normal network effects and will probably lead to barriers to entry. But even then, I would still argue that true network effects, the kind of network effects that are enjoyed by Airbnb, Alibaba, and Facebook, will still typically be stronger than the kind of network effect that you can get from data-enabled learning. You know, and there's several reasons for that. Uh, first of all, you know, data is great, but you can, I can buy data. In a lot of cases, even if I don't have a customer, a large customer base, I can acquire the data from other sources. It's much more difficult to acquire millions of customers, which is what typically is required if you have just pure network effects. Second, there's this very nice metaphor that uh, an Intuit executive uh, told me, which is the reason they like true network effects is pretty much I can stop innovating, I can literally go to sleep, and then the platform that has network effects will actually tend to, you know, will still accrue value just because there are lots of users participating and innovating on the platform. If all you have is data-enabled learning, that's useful, but you still have to do a lot of work. You still have to do work in extracting value from that data. So it's not, again, it's not as comfortable a position as the one you can get from, uh, from network effects. So in conclusion, I would say, so there's, again, there's a lot, of, a lot of products going forward that will acquire data-enabled learning capabilities. A lot of products will become smart, quote unquote, and connected, even the most mundane product. So they will be able to improve you know, using data-enabled learning. However, that doesn't mean that all these products are somehow, or that their providers are going to magically acquire unassailable competitive positions. Uh, and typically, data-enabled learning will probably become table stakes, so everyone should probably do it, but it's not gonna necessarily give very strong competitive edges unless you know, all the answers to the seven questions that I, that I went through is gonna be yes. So under those specific conditions, yes, you probably can, can build relatively sustainable positions, but otherwise, the most, I still think the most valuable and the most powerful companies will still be the ones that are built on regular network effects, so Alibaba, Amazon, Facebook, and so on, augmented by uh, data-enabled learning. Thank you very much.